It's the quality of our life that is important, not how long we live. How to live life to the fullest has been a topic of discussion and thought among humankind for centuries. We all have different approaches on how to maximize our time here on Earth, and we are all constantly searching for ways to make our lives meaningful. The Vietnamese monk Thich Nhat Hanh produced many written works during his lifetime to give us all an insight into how he believes a worthwhile life could happen. In his work, The Art of Living, Thich Nhat Hanh provides us with numerous ideas on how to live more mindfully. He does this by introducing us to the Three Doors of Liberation, as well as four practices from Sutra in the Full Awareness of Breathing. Both are very commonly taught in every school in Buddhism. The Art of Living will be presented in two parts to facilitate easier consumption. In this video, we will look at the Three Doors of Liberation. The Three Doors of Liberation are Emptiness, Signlessness, and Aimlessness. They are all connected to each other and address similar concepts through different perspectives. Let us take a look at each one. Emptiness Emptiness means to be full of everything, but empty of a separate existence. Emptiness refers to how we don't have a separate self. We are made up of various elements, and at the same time, part of something much larger than ourselves. Thich Nhat Hanh mentions flowers as an example. Flowers are full of life, made up of non-flower elements like soil, rain, sunshine, even clouds, oceans, and minerals. Without them, flowers would cease to exist. Flowers are full of the whole cosmos, but at the same time, they are empty of a separate self-existence. We are the same. We are also all full of the whole cosmos and empty of a separate self-existence. When we say that we are empty, it means that we must be there in order to be empty of a permanent, separate self. Emptiness across space. Thich Nhat Hanh explains that we can contemplate emptiness in terms of what he calls interbeing. Interbeing is a concept that he mentions in many of his works, expressing how everything and everyone in this world is connected. In a child, we can see their parents and grandparents in the way they look, act, and speak. In each one of us, we can see our family, friends, and mentors. And going back to the flower example, we can see the full universe inside a flower. Whether we're at work or at home, we can practice to see all our ancestors and teachers present in our actions. Emptiness over time. He also notes that not only can we contemplate emptiness in terms of interbeing across space, as we have already discussed, we can also think about it in terms of impermanence over time. Here, he brings up a river as an example. Just like how we cannot bathe in the same river or water twice, everything in the world is in a constant state of flux, including ourselves. Since we are all made up of elements that are constantly changing, we are also constantly changing. Thus, there is no permanent self. The river is always flowing. So as soon as we climb out onto the bank and then return again to bathe, the water has already changed. And even in that short space of time, we too have changed. 
our thoughts, perceptions, feelings, and state of mind are also changing from one moment to the next. So we cannot swim twice in the same river, nor can the river receive the same person twice. No owner, no boss. Thich Nhat Hanh also teaches us that a separate self doesn't really exist by noting that we are not the owners of our actions, but instead the actions themselves. When we think, work, or breathe, many of us believe there must be someone doing the actions. But Thich Nhat Hanh mentions how when the wind blows, it simply blows. When it rains, it simply rains. There is no blower or rainer. The raining and the wind blowing are simply happening. When we think, we are our thinking. When we work, we are the working. When we breathe, we are the breathing. When we act, we are our actions. Signlessness. Death is essential to making life possible. Death is transformation. Death is continuation. Signlessness refers to how there is more than what meets the eye. That may sound similar to emptiness, but signlessness focuses more on how appearances can be deceiving and distract us from seeing the true nature of reality. Thich Nhat Hanh talks about a cloud as an example. Suppose we look up at the sky and see a beautiful cloud. Then we look up again a few moments later and notice that the sky is cloudless, clear, and blue. Initially, we may think that the cloud has disappeared. But if we look deeply, the elements that form the cloud have now become rain, mist, or perhaps snow. Where there is a sign, there is always deception. Similar to the river metaphor mentioned while discussing emptiness, signlessness is also a reminder of impermanence in life. Our form and appearance has changed a lot since we were infants, and will continue to change as we grow old. But the truth is that we are still ourselves, even if we look different. This is a practice of contemplating your own signlessness. Today, you look, speak, act, and think differently. Your form, feelings, perceptions, and consciousness are all very different. You are not fixed or permanent. Every day, you transform. Some part of you is being born, and some part is dying. Whether we're dying quickly or slowly, it's all the same. With this insight, the quality of our life becomes richer, and we appreciate every moment. One day lived deeply with this insight may be worth more than a thousand days without it. Aimlessness You already are what you want to become. You are a marvel. You are a wonder. Many of us are living restless lives. We are running towards some promised future and away from the past. We are always searching outwards for happiness and fulfillment. But Thich Nhat Hanh says that we don't need to go anywhere. We have everything we need right here within us. The way out is in. Aimlessness refers to how we can embrace the present moment and to discover that only the present moment can give us what we are looking for and that we already are everything we want to become. So as long as we think we are a separate self distinct from the world around us, 
we think we can get out of the world. But once we see that we are the world, that we are made entirely of non-us elements, we realize that we do not need to go running after anything outside of us. The world cannot get out of the world. We already are everything we are looking for. Aimlessness isn't about doing nothing and going about our lives without meaning. It's about not chasing after certain cravings and desires to discover that happiness and freedom are available to us in the present moment. Art of Stopping As soon as there is stopping, there is happiness. There is peace. We must all learn to stop, to appreciate our lives very deeply. It is easier said than done, but it can help us immensely in this complicated world that we live in. We are constantly running after wealth, love, attention, happiness, knowledge, and the like. But perhaps all the answers are inside, not outside. Perhaps we can only find the answers when we deliberately take a moment to stop and look inward. When we stop like that, it looks as if nothing is happening, but in fact, everything is happening. You are deeply established in the present moment, and you touch your cosmic body. You touch eternity. There is no more restlessness, no more seeking. Practicing the art of stopping can lead us to appreciate the present to the fullest. We enjoy the present rather than living in the past or worrying about the future. As Thich Nhat Hanh boldly states, only the present moment is real. He also writes, if we continue to hold on to a dream for something in the future, we lose the present moment. And if we lose the present, we lose everything. So we must practice aimlessness and let go of insignificant cravings and desires that we are waiting for or running after. Once we identify our cravings and let go of them, we can discover that everything we want is already in front of us in the present moment. Everything that we think we have to find on the outside is already here inside us. Allow me to share one last quote to wrap up the video. We just need to live a simple, authentic life. Our true person, our true self, doesn't need a particular job or position. Our true self doesn't need money, fame, or status. Our true self doesn't need to do anything. We just live our life deeply in the present moment. When we eat, we just eat. When we wash dishes, we just wash the dishes. When we use the bathroom, we just enjoy using the bathroom. When we walk, we just walk. When we sit, we just sit. Doing all these things is a wonder, and the art of living is to do them in freedom. Thank you for watching.